Hello and welcome to my channel, I Win to Lose Gaming. You guys gotta check this out. Look, this boy making it rain. Now, unfortunately, that does not add any credits to our inventory, despite how many uh, golden coins he's able to conjure out of thin air. After all, these are imaginary gold coins. We're going to be taking a look at adventuring today, and we'll be looking at a lot more than his chest window here. Now, our boy adventuring is going to be coming pretty soon uh, in one week from likely when this video is released, and these are going to be my first impressions of him. We'll be going over a quick overview of his kit and we'll also take a look at the details about his traces. Then we're gonna take a look at a quick damage comparison between his free to play light cone option and finally his signature light cone at super in position one. Now, how am I able to share this footage with you guys one week early? This is footage from the creator experience server. Fortunately, I have some great news regarding it. Now the content in this video might not be fully indicative of the final product. There might be changes prior to his actual release and great news. Hoyoverse actually listened to our feedback and there are no more DMCA restrictions. That means there are no restrictions from making transformative content and you can utilize the content in this video to the fullest. Woohoo! But again, there might be some minor changes between the creator experience server and his actual release. So really quick before we dive into a quick explanation of his kit, here are the materials that you will want to pre-farm for him if you are planning to pull for him right here on the screen somewhere. Um, not very used to pointing at things on the screen from the webcam, but there it is. And now let's actually dive into taking a look at what this man's kit can do. Adventuring is imaginary character who is part of the preservation path and that means his goal is to help keep your team alive. And right off the bat, you guys can see, hey, so I noticed that my big old noggin was blocking off the health bars for the characters. So we couldn't actually see the shield values for the characters. But as we can see, the characters spawned in with a pretty decent amount of shield that scales off of Adventuring's skill. And let's go ahead and just use his skill once real quick so you guys can see but basically, Adventuring is able to use his shield in order to stack that shield up to two times the value of his skills shield amount. And bam, just like that, we've got a super thick shield after using his skill, which provides shield to the entire party. Now, another way that Adventuring can also improve the shield is when Adventuring actually launches his own follow up attack. It will increase the shield of all the characters by a much smaller amount than his skill. Now he's launched his follow-up attack. And we can see that everyone's shield also went up a bit, or at least the ones that weren't at max. What's really cool about his follow-up attack also doing his shield is that it refreshes the three-turn duration of his shield. So speaking of Adventuring's follow-up attack, in order for him to activate his follow-up attack, he will need seven out of seven of his blind bets. He can gain blind bets when an ally utilizes a follow-up attack. Since Dr. Ratio failed to do his follow-up attack, we can use uh, Topaz, whose basic attack counts as a follow-up attack, and Numbi also counts as a follow-up attack, thus giving him two stacks of blind bet. And when allies are hit, we can see that his blind bet counter is also going up, and when Adventuring himself is hit, he gains two blind bets, as long as I believe they have their shields active. So let's go ahead and give him another blind bet with Dr. Ratio's giant pencil. And Numbi gave him 7 out of 7, and thus he activated his follow-up attack. So we also have Adventuring's talent, which is a bit of a gambling simulator. And you want to get something like that with all three. And now you'll start the battle with the biggest buff that his technique can provide, which I believe is 60%. Oh, no. Oh, it's only 36% defense. So what's the animation for 60%? Let's get out of here real quick. And we're going to keep trying this until we get a 60% buff.
There we go. So we got three spades. And now he has a different icon. Oh my gosh. So to get the most out of this character, you have to gamble away your techniques and hope you get three spades in order to get the max buff. Oh my god. But anyway, the real reason why I wanted to actually hop back into this battle was to show you his ultimate really quick. So we're going to do this. And his ultimate does a single target, basically nuke, which deals a decent amount of toughness damage as well. And it also gives him a random amount between one and seven of his bats. And in this case, we only got two out of seven. But very importantly, it applies a guaranteed debuff onto the enemy called Unnerved, which increases the crit damage that the enemy takes by 15% at trace level 10. So I'll go through pretty much all his traces right here. We can see that he gets imaginary damage, effect res, and defense percent from his minor little traces. Here are his major traces in the Creator Experience server. And finally, here are these traces as well. Here are Aventurine's Eidolons, which I have not really looked at in depth, so I'm not going to comment on them. And we have his Light Cone as well, where we can see the stats are right here. And if we select Superimpose, these are the new values that we get. But let's actually talk a bit more about it in more detail. First of all, his basic attack trace, this actually deals damage entirely based on his defense stat. Now up next we have his skill which costs a skill point and more importantly it generates a shield on every single character in the party for a pretty significant amount. We can see that according to this chart with 4000 defense he will be generating 1280 shield at trace level 10 with his skill. And the shield is able to stack for up to 200% of the skill's value. So the maximum amount of shield that his thing can provide is 2,560 with the current uh, 4,000 defense, a talent level 10, etc, etc. So up next, we have his ultimate. Basically, it is a single target nuke that scales off of Aventurine's defense stat. And it also applies a guaranteed debuff called Unnerved onto the enemy. It will also generate one to seven of those coin things that I mentioned that triggers his follow-up attack. So this is a pretty big range. Sometimes you'll get one, sometimes you'll get seven. Up next, we have his talent. His talent basically makes it so everyone in the party gains 50% effect resistance as long as they have his shield up and active on them. Eventually, also gains one point of blind bet after getting attacked. And his allies also give him one point of blind bet when they are attacked. So to answer the question, let's say that Aventurine gets attacked by an enemy, he will gain two blind bets, one from, I guess, quote unquote, an ally being attacked and one for himself being attacked right here. And to answer the next question is, what if it is an AoE attack that hits your entire team? Well, it hit four characters on the team plus one from this Aventurine thing. So he will actually gain five blind bets if it is an attack that hits the entire team and everyone has a shield active. After Aventurine, reaches seven points of blind bet he will then consume those seven points and launch his fall up attack where you guys saw all the coins rain on the enemy with each hit dealing 25 percent so that means seven times 25 is 150 percent scaling off of his defense and this is randomly distributed randomly targeted between the enemies that are on the field and finally he can also have a few overflow points so if for example he goes up to 10 blind bet points he consumes seven, he'll be left over with three blind bets in order to speed up the next follow-up attack a little bit quicker. Now, the next thing to take note of is his passives, which leverage is a very important one because for every 100 points of defense for adventuring that exceeds 1600, he will gain 2% additional crit rate for a maximum of 48% crit rate. So he is very, very saturated on crit rate and this is also why you want to target about 4,000 defense with Aventurine.
So I did do two quick damage tests versus a single target and with three debuffs on the enemy so that way the pioneer's buff doesn't get messed up. And we're gonna be paying attention to his follow-up attack damage. Starting with the free-to-play friendly light cone, which you can get in the Memory of Chaos shop, I believe, the Destiny's Threads for Woven. We can see here that Adventuring's follow-up attack did 18,855 damage. And here is the build for it, where unfortunately I wasn't able to reach 4,000 defense with this light cone because of its lowish base defense stat, but it is what it is. Up next, I did the exact same test, but this time with his signature light cone, Inherently Unjust Destiny as Super Imposition 1. Now his follow-up attack did 27,430 damage, which is a 45.48% increase to his fall of attack damage. And personally, I'm not surprised by this because this thing just has much higher base defense and it provides 40% defense and it provides 40% crit damage and it provides a debuff on the enemy. And all this also allows Aventuring to swap out his defense percent orb for an imaginary damage orb, thus doing way more damage. Now, again, these in-game tests are very flawed and they're purely anecdotal. And for actual, more accurate calculations, do tune in for my full guide video coming coming out on Aventurine's release. So what are my first impressions of Aventurine? Well, Aventurine is a very solid shielder and honestly comparable, if not better, than Jepard in most scenarios. He also has very strong synergy with characters that spam a lot of follow-up attacks like Dr. Ratio and Topaz. And I think he has a decent amount of synergy with a character like Akron, especially with his Super Imposition 1 Light Cone. He's also a character that deals non-negligible damage, even with his free-to-play friendly option, Destiny's Threads for Woven. And with his signature light cone, this does upgrade his damage from non-negligible damage to decent damage. Granted, his signature light cone doing 45.5% more damage on his follow-up attack is frankly a huge difference, but at the very least, his shielding capabilities will still be good enough regardless of whether or not you have a signature light cone. Now, I do think we're starting to see a trend of the universal market when it comes to signature light cones, where they are a very, very significant upgrade over their free-to-play options. More than the usual 10 to 20%, which we've been kind of used to based on past light cones as well as based on Genshin Impact. And nowadays we're seeing upwards of 30 to 50% of a difference between the Superimposition 1 light cone and the free-to-play options. Still, regardless of how much damage he does, he's primarily a shielder and he is a very powerful shielder at that. And shields are very powerful in the simulated universe so if you've been struggling in that, he's a great character for that. And generally, they are more than enough to keep you alive in all the other content in the game. Aventuring also marks another shift in the meta, not just being a great general use shielder, who's also tailor-made for follow-up attack teams, but also taking a hybrid role of sustain plus sub DPS. Up to this point, our other sustainers have either been completely focused on just sustaining or provide some offensive buffs for our team. So yeah, this is another trend of the universal market that Adventuring is setting. Now, another funny tidbit about him is you're playing a gacha game with a gacha character with gacha mechanics. And for casual play, fortunately, it hardly matters which buff you get from his technique or how many blind bets he gets from his ultimate. However, for optimized runs, I was already annoyed by it a bit, and I can see this being a bit of a pain in the gas pipe for those that really like to optimize their runs. Overall though, the Gamba parts of his kit are more amusing than they are an actual issue most of the time. Anyway, let me know what you think about Aventuring down below. Are you planning to pull for him? And what do you think about the discrepancy between his free-to-play light cone option and his signature light cone? As always, I appreciate every single one of you. This is I Went to Lose, signing out.